Oh my god. It, it's commenting? It's commenting. That is now starting to get very close to agentic stuff. Welcome back to the Feature Crew, everybody. Today we got a little bit of a surprise product announcement and simultaneous ship from OpenAI, and it seems to be an answer to some of the like pages plus chat features we've seen in things like Notebook LM and um, and more recently in Copilot, in Microsoft's Copilot, and also in Perplexity. It's a little bit hard to explain in words how this feature works, so I think we should just, you know, we got blessed by Sam Altman. He gave us uh, like the early end of the rollout, so I think we'll just jump in and show it off and we can uh, figure out how it works. I don't even have access, so I'm super excited to see how this goes. Okay, cool. So the first off, the way that you access the new Canvas mode is they're currently hiding it in the model selector. I imagine that in the long run, Canvas will be something that can just sort of dynamically pop up in chats. But for now, it's in the model selector. So And it's limited to GPT-4.0 with Canvas. I think it'll be really interesting to see some of the coding abilities of O1 with Canvas. And we'll do a video uh, down the road on that, hopefully, when it comes out. Uh, I just wanted to get started by asking it to write something so you can see kind of how the UX works. So I've asked it, just to get us some content uh, out down on the page, I've asked it to write a blog post about the most exciting AI tools. So we'll see if it maybe even counts itself as one of them. So you can already okay. see that that clean animation, it kind of, it are, it starts streaming in the response from ChatGPT and then it blows it up to be most of the screen. Um, and then on the left is where the chat resides and that's where we can iterate uh, iterate with ChatGPT one, uh, once it's done. So we've got this blog post here, and in terms of like quality of the output uh, from a from a cursory glance here, Dylan, it, it looks like it looks. I mean, I don't know if there's any extra prompting going in, but it kind of looks like a normal chat you know, chat GPT response. Obviously, the difference is this this nice view that we get, and then you can already kind of see some of these suggested prompts and the ability to interact on the left. And yeah, this certainly doesn't you know like this is just nice. You know, like I'm seeing it as a first time react. I'm like, you know, this is what I kind of expected. It's great that it's there. The fact that it's already working with 4.0 is great. I think it'll be super interesting with Owen. Um, I'm interested to see how you collaborate with it because, again, I haven't played with it. So you can write something underneath it now. Can you also like highlight text and edit it? Yep, so we can edit in here. We can do, write anything in here. We can also highlight text and edit it. We can also see this Ask Chat GPT pop up. So this is what they were talking about in the blog where you can um, give Chat GPT feedback about a specific part of the document. So we can try that. So let's say add emojis to this section so then my query goes right into the chat and you can see the reference that uh that it included like a reference to the document and then it made edits only to the section that i highlighted awesome i mean this reminds me a lot of like the different kind of you know, github copilots and stuff like that and i'm sure we'll give it a spin with code um because it seems exactly tailor-made for code um but this is great um seems to work as expected and if you message in the screen, how much context does it have? Like if you said, okay, now go change the, you know, section two. Is it supposed to know the kind of inline stuff as well? So if I just, if I don't directly reference it, but I reference it with words, yeah. it does realize where we're, what we're talking mm -hmm. about. It seemed like there was an animation of selecting that section first, and then there was an animation of actually editing it. Pretty awesome, actually. Like, I, I do like UX that shows you what it's editing, and it's great that you can go in both sections. Um, no, fantastic. Cool. So then I'm going to try some of these like suggested prompts here. So we already kind of mm. did add emoji. Here's the add final polish. I want to see what that does. Mm. Yeah, go for it. So it sends a message in the chat, although it doesn't actually show a message. It just kind of jumps right into the editing loading animation. Uh, and it looks like it made changes kind of throughout the document while keeping most of the content and structure the same. Hard for me to tell. There doesn't really seem to be any diff. Mm. UI. So it's hard for me to tell what the actual changes were. It's definitely a piece of feedback, I think, for, for especially for like large operations like Super that. Super large. Like, yeah, yeah. Document. like there's, you know, you might not, not, not have even seen when it was making the changes, let alone highlighting those changes. So we have version, version management up here. So we can but go there's back. no like actual diff, right? Previous version. Yeah, there's no diff still. That, that's something okay. that's needed. But to be fair, this is already great. The fact that there mm -hmm. is versioning and go back to different versions and stuff, like that's already a start. An average user, even when we say diff, I think people, not everyone knows what that means. It's like, we wanna see like typically line by line, like, oh, if you changed, you know, the conversation AI to the AI, we would wanna see like a word that was removed. And that gives us confidence that we know like what the AI has done. So like, for example, it looks like there was maybe something done there. 
and it would be great. Like you have to kind of flip between and kind of look to see where it moves. It'd be great if there was a view to say, hey, this was the difference between the views. Is this okay? And then you can be like, okay, this looks good. Or we might accept some differences and not other. But regardless, the fact that there is versioning already in this kind of beta is great. Mm -hmm. then... Versioning it, by the way, is the hard technical problem. So once you've got that, making a diff kind of view is actually not that hard. Let's say, let's try this reading level. This is an interesting UX with the slider. So oh, that's awesome. It has these different uh, sort of education levels. So let's go down. Let's bring it yep. down to kindergarten. That's actually super interesting. I, I wonder how they you chose these. Your helper because... friend, Mid Journey, make pretty pictures. I really <laughs> like this version. This is awesome. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's cheesy, but I was like, I wonder how they chose. This is totally such a nice thing to show off, right? Because I think that average person is going to be like, wow, you know, the whole explain it to me like I'm five. It's actually such a thing. And then being able to crank it up to be like, okay, make it more complicated. There's a really cool use of, you know, just like AI is great at lots of different things, but sometimes I think we struggle to find good like uses. So sometimes having those suggested uses helps you like get creative. You're like, wow, like I could use it to do this. Now I could prompt it to do this. So I think this is actually a great um, little bit of fun UX they've added. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And it also like, like Dylan's kind of getting at it, it'll help people discover some of these features of LLMs, like things that they can do. Um, and then also for people who already know, it's just sort of like easy access, right? Um, and built into this like contextual tool. Let's see. We can also adjust length, which we kind of have already done. Uh, and then it has suggest edit. So I'd love to see what the UX is like for this. Um, oh my God. Okay. Glad I tried that one. I mean, this is almost like a diff anyway, right? All they need to do is just like yeah. do this, but like it's, it, it's commenting. It's commenting, consider simplifying the sentence. So it's like very contextual. It's super interesting how they're mixing all these paradigms. I wonder what they have cooking in the background, honestly. Is this kind of getting towards like agentic stuff? Imagine if there was like, hey, reply and tell GPT what to do. This is, I, you and know, effect, this is cool. It, it, it is. And especially it's that it's also giving you like a feedback in the, the left pane as well. Mm -hmm. Like I like that it's, they're trying to solve some of these agentic things and it's awesome to see them like put this out there and get feedback yep definitely definitely and i like that you know i like that they're not you know like you said they're kind of mixing these paradigms and yeah this slider even it's just like a, a really interesting concept for how to take like a semantic concept uh and then like quantify it sort of on a slider and and like make it work with traditional ui paradigms. it's so true i mean in my opinion this is kind of humanizing it like a little spider, like these are the kind of like pieces of magic that make software a lot more usable. Mm -hmm. So I think this is fantastic. Like when we initially saw it, I was like, oh, okay, it's just cool UX. Now I'm suddenly like, wow, this is actually like pretty good. Like they've actually introduced quite a few novel things here. Um, again, it is similar to like other products in the market. And when we say like agentic stuff, you know, check out other videos on the channel. We're looking at all the current state of the art, but it's awesome that they're kind of laying a stake in the ground with a few new things and new concepts and getting ahead of it. Um, and the fact that they released it without being like, hey, like this is going to come out soon. They just immediately put it out. Fantastic. So one thing I one thing I want to try is that comment thing was really cool, but it it seems like ChatGPT really decides what it's looking for, what type of feedback it's leaving, because the only trigger we had here was like suggest edits, right? So I wonder if we can trigger that same UX, but from the chat pane with like a longer prompt that actually pushes ChatGPT to give certain type of feedback. Go for it. I mean, that is now starting to get very close to agentic stuff. Right. So I'm going to, I'll clear out these, <laughs> the old comments. And now I'll ask, so I'm asking it to, to suggest edits that make this more detailed. I think we had one suggestion on the last round that was going to add content. The rest of them were talking about like swapping out existing content. Yep. So these are all about appending content. And now if I clear these and then do the same thing with, now I'm asking it to suggest based on like sort of the accuracy of my language. So a pretty different question. And yep, all the, all the replies are about like replacing wording with different wording. So this is actually really cool. The fact that you this can is... push it, you're basically sending off an agent on the document for a second. And it's interesting in the blog post, I saw that they were mentioning you can use, they're like suggesting things like add to your prompt to use canvas. It's almost like they're now having these protected verbs, right? Of like, you know, suggest edits is now gonna have something invoke. Use canvas is gonna like bring up the canvas view. Um, so it'll be great to keep playing around with this and seeing what else there is. I mean, it seems like this is probably gonna be in the main 
interesting one. Like you could you know, adjust the length and all this kind of stuff. It's probably going to be very much like, oh, we just make the edit. But this is the first time where it's like, oh, it's very clear. It's gone and done something for you and is now waiting for you in the loop input, which has not really been a chat GPT paradigm um, before. So excellent stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I could even see how, oh, it looks like you can leave comments. Interesting. That function, or that's like a, it looks like a prompt UI. So you can inline leave these prompt and let's see what happens. Can you try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave something and let's see what happens. Like, is it going to reply to your comment or is it just going to be like, I've added that to my memory? Yeah, the comment disappeared. Then it went back into the pane. Mm. This feels really nice though, I have to say. Like the, mm. the, the selecting, the sort of commenting in line. I'm, I'm, def I'm honestly definitely taking notes. Um, yeah. And then I think this, is... this, this feels in a way better than some of the other, like even, you know, a lot of this sort of like, how do you best edit with AI? A lot of the most investments gone into coding tools like Cursor or Copilot. And this is like, it's doing some similar things, but maybe even a little bit more with some of these agentic elements. Honestly, I am super excited to try this out for coding. Um, yeah. I, I think, think we'll we, video, right? yeah, yeah, I was going to say, um, we definitely need to get our hands on this and play around for it. Uh, play around with it for a bit longer to make sure that we can give the best honest opinion but initial knee-jerk reaction like i'm actually surprised you know like my bar for open ai is pretty high but this is actually fantastic as a just very quick early release um like we said it's mixed a lot of these paradigms it's done a great job it seems very intuitive and they're starting to chip away at the really hard problems and i love that like they're, they're not just playing catch up yep yep and I think like some of the things we tested today, like just the fact that, you know, you can, you can, there, there's basically multiple ways to do anything you would want to do to the document. You can yeah, comment yeah. in line, you can ask for comments, you can just kind of mention where in the document you want edits in the chat pane. You can ask for edits to the whole document. You can click the suggested buttons that make edits to the whole yeah. document or part of the document. So the flexibility is really awesome. This addresses a it, lot it of the problems I've had seems, with AI writing it, tools. So true, it's intuitive. As the big thing I was going to say, right? Like the fact that there's so many different entry points means that no matter where you go, you can probably get done what you want to get done. You're not going to be gated by the tool, right? Like it feels like the AI has got like complete access to everything here and can like, yeah, like suggest edits and like then it can go off and do that. Or you can like actually finally prompt it or give it like a, a macro thing where you don't even like give it a prompt, you know, the sliders. So I think no matter what users will be able to click around and figure out what they want to do without having to be like, fully understanding how to prompt well. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's just sort of overall going to be a very, it, you know, a lot of people are going to copy this paradigm now, especially as yeah. it matures a little bit. And I'm excited yep. for that yep. because it, my initial reaction is that they've really solved this. Okay, how does this like chat pane, which is being used as an input, but it's also being used as history and, and, and as other things, how does that interact with a canvas? How do they go back and forth between each other? And it seems like a lot of those questions are kind of answered here. And so I hope that those big questions and some other AI products start getting solved now that ChatGPT has kind of like led the way. It's actually kind of insane. Damn. <laughs> I was kind of not expecting it to be this good. Yeah, no, so, it's really good. Yeah. I think, you know, <laughs> reser totally reserving judgment on coding because coding has all yeah, of its, yeah. you know, its own special things. And um, and we'll, we'll spend, some, you know, we'll spend a day or two playing around with that and then come back and make another video about um, yep. the 4.0 with Canvas coding ability. But in terms of its like writing ability um, and working on artifacts that aren't meant to be compiled and run, um, it's mm. pretty pretty impressive. And it's very much mm -hmm. sitting in that like, you know, while there are some agentic pieces, it is not agentic, and it seems to keep yeah. the human in the loop in a really clean and frictionless way. So I'm excited yeah. to use it. More. Totally, um, very exciting. I hope I get access soon, and we'll play around with it, and we'll drop a video on coding very very soon. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped. And I also hope that you all get access really soon. Um, and yeah, stay, you know, stay tuned for our coding video. And as always, uh, give us a like if you like the video and subscribe if you want to stay along for the ride. Thanks so much.